Beekeepers Association in China uh, went to Wuhan right after the first wave of COVID and they interviewed all the beekeepers and uh, not a single beekeeper got COVID, even when living with a COVID positive patient. Hello everyone, I'm a beekeeper. Um, I've been in Lahore for the last six years and I've done a beekeeping course from the University of Cornell Small Farms Program. Um, I'm also currently taking care of HSN's bees and teaching beekeeping there. I've had this love affair with bees um, for a few years, even before I started doing the courses. Um, but it all started with me being into uh, nature and wanting to take care of the environment. Um, I had uh, a lady who had a farm in the US when I was living there and she invited me to come see her bees. When um, I walked with her around the bees, looked inside the hive, I just fell in love with, um, with them. It's um, quite amazing that when you're with the bees, um, you go into this meditative state because you and the bees have to be one. You have to pay attention to their sounds uh, what they're doing, um, mostly so you don't get stung, but um, it's, you forget, you forget about everything else and the bees become the center focus of everything when you're with them. After that, I decided that before I moved to Pakistan, I have to uh, do beekeeping courses, which I did. And uh, when I moved to Lahore, the first thing I did was um, get two boxes, two beehives, from that point, you know, I, I was getting honey for myself and my family and people wanted honey. Uh, people like my friends, they'd come to me and say, you know, we want some honey too. And uh, so I decided two boxes were not enough. And so I started growing my uh, bees and I'm now at about uh, 40 hives. Um, each of these hives has about um, 40,000 on average, 40,000 bees on average. Um, so I've been doing this for a few years now. And at some point, um, you know, the, um, I, had, I had thought about um, how bees help different ailments. And my mother at one point had um, really bad arthritis where she couldn't even lift a cup and it would hurt her fingers. Um, so I decided I'm going to extract some bee venom and add it to an oil. And so I made her bee venom oil to put on her fingers. And just three days later, she forgot to apply it because she didn't have any pain. And um, it, it just, you know, it felt like it was just amazing. I, I had no idea that something like that could happen. And so I started giving this bee venom oil to lots of people and um, a lot of people benefited from it. So I started doing more research, um, you know, what else can bee venom help? And uh, it turns out it's really amazing for eczema. Um, I have several children who've uh, completely recovered from eczema. Um, there are several people who, you know, are using my psoriasis ointment and um, can, um, you know, they're in that stage where it doesn't completely go away, but it's very well managed. And they had tried everything else before from regular doctors and just, you know, couldn't manage it before. Um, I've also, I have a version for anti-aging, so I have ladies who uh, and women who apply it to their face, um, they're, they're thrilled about it. Just three days or four days later, they tell me, oh my God, my skin is looking so much better. My, um, there, there's just so much improvement in three days that some people have actually told me, people have started asking, where are you getting your uh, facials done from? So it's quite effective for that. Um, I, I have a hair oil for it. 
the B venom is also really amazing for growing hair. There's this child who came to me. She was about six or seven years old at the most, and she had these bald spots um, called alopecia. And um, she applied this ointment only for eight to nine weeks, and her mother sent me a picture. It was like she never had it. Like I could not from the before picture and the after picture. Like the after picture looked like, like the the that bald spot was never there. There's also this really interesting, um, not a study, but um, this thing related to COVID where bee venom um, appears to help. Um, the Beekeepers Association in China uh, went to Wuhan right after the first wave of COVID and they interviewed all the beekeepers. And uh, not a single beekeeper got COVID even when living with a COVID positive patient. Um, they also interviewed all the AP therapists. An AP therapist is the person who stings other people for health benefits. Um, and not a single AP therapist or the patient got COVID. So after the reading the study, I gave my whole family stings. I, my mother, my husband, my children, um, my grandparents, and this was before vaccines were around. So um, I just knew I had to, you know, I actually flew to Karachi to my grandparents' house and uh, my friends, my old friends, you know, everyone got uh, these things. And now I've stung over 50 people since then and, and not a single person uh, got COVID. There are approximately 40,000 bees in an average hive. Uh, there's always one queen and there are several, 99% of the bees are uh, female worker bees. Um, these worker bees only live about 30 to 40 days, whereas the queen lives for three to five years. So in these 30 to 40 days, the bees have various jobs in the hive and the last week they spend um, out in the field looking for nectar, bringing the nectar home. The nectar, like if you have about an eighth of a teaspoon, just about this much, that's a whole um, life's worth of honey that a bee makes. And so I always encourage my children never, never, never to waste even just even a tiny bit of honey because it's a whole lifetime's worth of work for a bee. They go to many different flowers and depending on what's in season, um, every flower has different medicinal value. Um, and even science backs up that honey works better than cough syrup. Actually, honey is hydrophilic. It means it absorbs moisture. So um, the way it kills germs is it engulfs the germ and sucks its moisture out and it dies. So I would really recommend that whoever's having honey should uh, um, not put it in liquid because it'll suck all the liquid from your chai or your um, whatever you're putting it in and it won't give you the healing properties as much anyway. Also, um, heat will kill a lot of the honey's enzymes. So you don't want to overheat it. Don't put it in really, really burning hot chai. Wait for it to cool off a little bit before you put it in. And if you're really wanting to kill those cough germs or whatever it is, you need to have it direct without having liquid before and after. So I would really recommend like if you're having allergies to your local environment, you should, if you're in Lahore, you should have honey from Lahore. And if you're in another city, if you're in Islamabad, have honey from Islamabad. Those, when you have the local pollen in you, uh, it'll actually um, help you not be allergic to what's in the environment. Different honeys will have different properties, like eucalyptus honey will really, you know, help with the lungs, uh, get that congestion out. Um, actually, everyone's heard of manuka honey. Manuka honey is from the tea tree. Um, plant and one of its most amazing things that it does is it heals wounds and burns. So I always have uh, a little bit of manuka honey in my house always 
and um, if if a child gets a wound, a cut, a scrape, uh, I apply manuka honey, and it you know it doesn't get infected. In fact, my daughter once she got her a hand jammed in a car, and I was applying applying all these ointments that the doctor has said antibiotic ointments, all these things, and it was just becoming worse. And at the end, I'm like, I don't know why I didn't think of this before, but I started applying manuka, and just in three days there was so much improvement in her, her thumb that I, I couldn't believe how much it had healed. Um, we avoided surgery because of it. Honey is an amazing healer. Um, I definitely recommend that um, everyone has a teaspoon of honey daily. Um, my beekeeping instructor that taught me, she had told me that she had never gotten the flu or a cough or a cold in five years because she had been having a teaspoon of honey as soon as she woke up in the morning. And one of the things that everyone needs to look out for is to buy raw honey. So you don't want pasteurized honey. Um, you don't want the store-bought uh, stuff that's, they've got the pollen removed from it. Pollen's amazing also um, for health. So look for local, look for um, raw. Thank you.